I present to you Dean Clarence Manny. Thank you uh, very much, Colonel Bunker. Uh, my uh, prime purpose in being here today is to get close to my dear friend Tom. Uh, the opportunity doesn't offer uh, frequently enough, but uh, I have a special injunction which I much to put in here by way of a, uh, an introduction, not to him, but to the whole business. I was called outside a moment ago. Uh, get this message. Whether you people know it or not, you are on the air. And uh, in the interest of balanced commentary, uh, somebody will have to say something nice about the New York Times, Federal Communications Commission. <laughs> well, uh, it so happens that I am able to oblige. Uh, clear everything up. I want to explain a little presentation that I uh, have made to you, which will be at everybody's plate at the dinner tonight. And uh, for those who can't wait, there will be some of them uh, at the counter in the lobby before you leave. Uh, now, fasten your seat belts. This is an editorial from the New York Times, uh, and that should satisfy the Federal Communications Commission, but uh, I am uh, concerned that it shall uh, satisfy you. I'm being very frank. This is an editorial from the New York Times, and uh, which is more surprising, it was written by me. Uh, and which is even more surprising, they asked me to write it, and uh, lo and behold, they paid me for it. It appeared in the New York Times a year ago today. I was uh, asked by the editor to do something for them on the Declaration of Independence and the Fourth of July. Uh, which I was very happy to do. They gave it this title. I didn't prepare one. They called it a very rare document. And uh, the reference was to the American Declaration of Independence. I'm extremely anxious for as many of you to get this as possible. You get them for nothing. If you don't get them today, get some of them from the Mannion Forum free of charge, because what the New York Times pays for, nobody else can sell. Uh, and while they granted me full privileges of reprinting, it was uh, on the condition that none of them be sold at any price. So literally, it is a priceless editorial, if you will pardon me. <laughs> now, I'm pointing out something here, my friends, with the indulgence of my f friend Anderson, who will be on momentarily, don't worry. Uh, what I am doing here is calling attention to uh, what I call the, the uh, computerized error. If you put an error into the input side of a computer, that error is going to be multiplied into every subsequent turn of the computer's wheel. And uh, this is one of the insidious things that has happened to American thought in our lifetime. We have been taught misconstructions and misapplications and misreadings of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. It's just as though somebody told your child and drilled it into his head that two and two is not four, but two and two is five. And all of the subsequent computations that he makes arithmetically will be based upon that basic error. 
And so he is going to be progressively wronger as the figures get more extensive and as the problem becomes more involved. I say here that 98% of the people of this country have never read the Declaration of Independence from beginning to end. And yet people like Bobby Seale and uh, Rennie Davis and Angela, too, are always talking about the spirit of revolution which they represent, hands up, clenched fists, uh, putting us on the defensive. After all, the country began in a revolution. These people are acting in the best American spirit. Now, when you read this explanation, please do so with the copy of the Declaration of Independence alongside of you, because the further you get into that document, as I have reflected it here, the more you will realize that what is wrong with this country is the misconstruction, the misapplication, growing out of neglect, primarily of the Declaration of Independence and secondarily of the Constitution of the United States. These two documents are basic, basic to all the progress that we have made, basic to all the mistakes that we will make through their misinterpretation. If this was understood and bro brought into the hearts of all of the Americans who instinctively love the Fourth of July and all that connotes, this country would be overcome within six months by the greatest religious revival that we have ever seen on the face of the earth. That's number one. This is a religious document, not this, my commentary. I'm talking about the Declaration of Independence itself. It was understood that way. And without God and the basic foundation of God's creative intelligence, there wouldn't have been any United States. And the people who got together on, uh, and in Philadelphia and produced this document and signed it as self-evident truth, waived all necessity for proof, and they came through with this. And we might have done well to have remembered what they said, and not just to take the word of people who pervert its meaning or to take the meaning of that is read into the Constitution today by certain Supreme Court justices of the United States, uh, and has been ever since prayer was driven out of the schools, and now that capital punishment is driven out of our penal system. Here is something else that I ordered and was going to give to you, but they're lying around the hotel here someplace. We can't find them. This is called cancer in the Constitution of this country. Uh, you read, heard last week about the judges who decided that capital punishment is now unconstitutional. Do you know how long that's been the case? Oh, forever. It violates the Constitution of the United States. Well, it never did it until 1964, less than 10 years ago. The Eighth Amendment, which all the justices referred to, capital punishment violates the Eighth Amendment. The Eighth Amendment up until 1964 had absolutely nothing to do with the laws that the states passed with reference to capital punishment. Who has changed the Constitution in less than 10 years? Uh, it's being misquoted. Its real purpose and language is not even being recalled by the present men on the bench. How can we recall their attention to what the Constitution really says? That is what I have tried to do in this book. But in the thing you're going to get tonight, I'm confining myself to the purpose of this day, this glorious 4th of July, glorious because of the faith that the truth inspired in the American people that has made us great. And I must say, uh, the New York Times find, found it possible to edit this document in one small part, not anything I said, but something I quoted at the end. 
which I thought was very appropriate and very true. And I'm sure that the deletion was because of space requirements. That appears from the editorial page itself when you look at it, and I'm being serious. Uh, here is what I put in and which they took out. President Coolidge, in 1926, made the most remarkable speech about the Declaration of Independence that you can find anywhere in print. I remember it because I read it at the time of its delivery, and much of it remained in my mind throughout the ensuing 50 years, uh, almost 50. will be 50 in 1976 if 1984 doesn't step in here first. Uh, here is what Mr. Coolidge said, I, the part I quoted in the conclusion of his speech. He said, there is a finality about the self-evident truths of the Declaration of Independence that is exceedingly restful. No advance, no progress can be made beyond these propositions. If anyone undertakes to deny these truths, the only direction in which he can proceed historically is backward to the time when there were no rights of the individual. These principles have their source and roots in religious convictions. Unless the faith of the American people in these religious convictions is to endure, the principles of the Declaration of Independence will perish. And I added to that simply the question, as you shall see, the question is then, have we kept the faith? And when you see the aberrations of law and order, when you see increases in statistics registering all of the evil things that can happen to a people, beginning with crime and going through the alphabet, ask yourself, have we kept the faith? Could this possibly be the result of our irreparable loss of what the Declaration of Independence declared for us and which was the skeleton of our prosperous and happy history uh, for ever so many years.